We end tonight with the clearest pictures yet of Neptune, the most distant planet in our solar system. When the James Webb Space Telescope first directed its infrared gaze toward Neptune, few expected the revelations that would follow. Launched with the intent to peer into the deep past of the cosmos and explore distant exoplanets, Webb has instead turned its attention inward within our own solar system, uncovering a narrative about Neptune that defies long-standing assumptions. For decades, Neptune has been viewed through a relatively narrow lens, an icy giant cloaked in deep blue, windswept clouds and a mysterious interior. But Webb's data paints a far more complex and unsettling picture, one that has ignited a flurry of questions in the scientific community and beyond. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The initial images were breathtaking. Neptune, stripped of the veil imposed by visible light, revealed in intricate detail through Webb's near-infrared camera. Gone was the featureless sphere. In its place, swirling storms, strange temperature anomalies, and unexpected heat signatures emerged. What stunned scientists most, however, wasn't simply the improved clarity, but the fact that Neptune seemed to be radiating energy in ways no model had anticipated. The planet's upper atmosphere, long thought to be uniformly cold and relatively stable, showed dramatic thermal inconsistencies. Certain regions were unexpectedly warm, suggesting localized energy sources or possibly internal dynamics that challenge existing theories about how Neptune functions as a planetary system. Even more baffling was the distribution of methane across Neptune's cloud layers. Methane is known to be the primary cause of Neptune's signature blue hue, absorbing red light and reflecting blue. But Webb's spectral analysis suggested that methane concentrations were not as consistent as previously believed. Some regions were methane-rich, while others were curiously depleted. This uneven distribution has vast implications, not just for atmospheric modeling, but for our broader understanding of how Neptune formed. Traditional theories posited that Neptune, forming in the outer reaches of the solar system, accumulated gases in a predictable, homogeneous fashion. Yet here was a world that seemed anything but uniform. The findings didn't stop at the atmosphere. Webb's sensitivity allowed it to peer deeper into Neptune's structure than ever before, revealing fluctuations in pressure and density that defied the assumed models of planetary layering. Rather than a smooth transition from atmosphere to mantle to core, the telescope revealed what appeared to be vast, turbulent zones within the planet's interior, potentially even pockets of superionic ice behaving in unexpected ways. Superionic ice, a strange phase of water that exists under extreme pressure and conducts electricity like metal, has long been theorized to exist within Neptune. But Webb's data hinted that it might not be contained neatly within the core, but rather interspersed through chaotic mobile regions that influence Neptune's magnetic field. Speaking of magnetism, perhaps the most jarring revelation came from Webb's observations of Neptune's magnetic field interactions. Neptune's magnetic field is already known to be bizarre, tilted at an extreme angle and offset from the planet's center, but Webb added new layers to the puzzle. Temporal fluctuations in the field strength, sudden surges and weak spots, suggested that Neptune's dynamo is more volatile than anyone anticipated. These changes hint at deeper processes within the planet that remain largely invisible but profoundly influential. If Neptune's magnetic field can shift so rapidly, what does that say about the stability of its core or the interactions between its inner layers? Then came the question of Neptune's moons, particularly Triton which Webb also observed in stunning detail. Triton is already an enigma, a captured Kuiper Belt object with retrograde orbit and active cryovolcanism. But what Webb uncovered was unsettling. Spectral traces on Triton's surface that didn't match any known compounds found in the outer solar system. These compounds, possibly complex hydrocarbons or even ammonia-rich ices, suggested chemical interactions that may be happening below Triton's crust or between Triton and Neptune's magnetosphere. If Triton is actively exchanging material with Neptune, then the two bodies may be part of a larger dynamic system, more like a binary pair than a simple planet-moon relationship. Another shock came when Webb mapped Neptune's rings. Yes, rings. Though dim and diffuse, Neptune does possess a system of rings that have been difficult to study in detail due to their distance and faintness. Webb changed that. It revealed patterns within the rings, gaps, clumps, and arcs that defied gravitational expectations. 
Something was interacting with the rings, shepherding them, disturbing their structure. While small moonlets were initially suspected, the clarity of Webb's imagery suggests there may be unknown forces or objects at play, possibly transient phenomena or undiscovered bodies lurking just out of view. These irregularities introduce the possibility that Neptune's environment is more dynamic, even unstable, than previously considered. All of these observations collectively point to one inescapable conclusion. Neptune is not what we were told. The picture taught in textbooks and reinforced by decades of inference, a cold, static ice giant quietly orbiting the outer reaches of the solar system, has been shattered. Neptune, as seen by Webb, is alive with complexity, brimming with unknowns. The planet is not a frozen relic, but a dynamic, volatile world with internal heat, shifting fields, and unexplained chemistry. This challenges not just the specifics of Neptune's description, but the very framework scientists have used to classify and understand planetary systems. The implications ripple far beyond Neptune itself. If our understanding of one of the closest outer planets can be so dramatically overturned, what does that say about the rest of the solar system? What about the exoplanets we routinely classify as Neptune-like? Webb was originally designed to study those distant worlds. Yet now it's clear we may not even understand the blueprint. The traits we assumed were typical of Neptune, its temperature profile, atmospheric composition, magnetic behavior, may be far from universal. Worse still, they might not even be accurate for Neptune. And that raises unsettling questions about the limitations of Earth-based assumptions. How many other celestial objects have we mischaracterized due to the veil of distance or the filter of outdated models? How many seemingly well-understood planets hide deeper truths beneath layers of cloud and silence? Webb's revelations force a reconsideration of planetary science at its core. It demands new models, new theories, and perhaps even new language to describe planetary processes that don't fit neatly into existing categories. There is also the matter of origin. The traditional narrative of planetary formation in the solar system hinges on the idea of a predictable accretion process, one that produced planets with relatively stable compositions and behaviors. Neptune defies that story. If its interior is as chaotic as Webb suggests, and if its atmosphere is not simply a thin veil but a complex, ever-changing system influenced by unknown forces, then perhaps Neptune didn't form where it currently resides. There have long been whispers in astrophysics of planetary migration, planets being jostled from their birthplaces by gravitational chaos in the early solar system. Webb's data lends weight to the theory that Neptune may have been an interloper. Shaped in one environment and exiled to another, its current behavior a relic of that tumultuous past. The energy outputs observed by Webb also throw a wrench into the presumed energy budgets of outer planets. Neptune is farther from the Sun than Uranus, yet it radiates more internal heat. No one has been able to explain this discrepancy fully. Now, with Webb detecting previously unseen energy spikes and temperature fluctuations, the mystery deepens. Where is this energy coming from? Is Neptune undergoing some internal transformation? Could radioactive decay, tidal heating, or unknown fusion-like processes be at play? These are no longer questions on the fringe of speculation. They are pressing issues raised by direct observation. As Webb continues to monitor Neptune, the hope is that patterns will emerge from the chaos. But until they do, scientists are left grappling with the possibility that Neptune is a kind of planetary wildcard, an exception that proves the rule might be broken. Its storms are more violent, its rings more unstable, its moons more active than previously documented. Even its color, that deep cerulean blue once thought to be simple methane absorption, now appears to be the result of more complex, possibly multi-layered scattering processes involving exotic aerosols or photochemical reactions. The effects on the scientific community have been immediate. Research papers are being retracted, rewritten, or simply abandoned. Conferences once focused on refining existing models are now tasked with replacing them. Neptune's new identity is disruptive, not just because it challenges specifics, but because it alters the terrain on which planetary science is built. It is a reminder that knowledge, especially when dealing with worlds so distant and so so different is always provisional, always at the mercy of new data, new tools, and new ways of seeing. James Webb wasn't supposed to unravel the mysteries of our own solar system. It was pointed outward toward the first galaxies, the cosmic dawn, the boundaries of space and time. Yet its greatest disruption so far has come much closer to home. Neptune, once relegated to the quiet outskirts of planetary interest, 
now stands at the center of a scientific upheaval. Not a frozen relic, but a roiling dynamic anomaly, refusing to conform, refusing to be explained. This is not just a story about a planet being misunderstood. It's about the fragility of scientific certainty in the face of better instruments. It's about the universe whispering through the veil of infrared light that we still don't know as much as we think we do. Neptune has always been distant, but now for the first time it feels truly alien. And as Webb's revelations continue to unfold, the only certainty is that the secrets of the ice giant are far from fully uncovered. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Neptune's true nature being different than NASA claims? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.